analytical chemistry deals with the separation identification and quantification of the substance and to undertake these activities many non instrumental and instrumental techniques are widely used so as far as the quantification is concerned the instrumental techniques are more popular they are more accurate and precise and many times the standard substance is used to quantify the substance present into the unknown sample in today's video i am going to walk you through how the standard can be used for quantification of the substance into the given sample so there are three important standard methods generally followed the number one is external standard method number two is internal standard method and number third can be the standard addition method so let us understand one by one the external standard method so in external standard method you have to prepare the standard solution at the uh, certain concentration and then compare the response of the standard solution or the response of the substance present in the sample solution against the response of the standard solution and then calculate the concentration of the substance present in the sample so by this way the external standard solution can be used for quantification of the substance present in a given sample the second technique is internal standard method now in case of internal standard method a suitable analyte in a constant amount is added into the sample as well as the standard during the analysis and we are going to talk about internal standard method in details in this video so the third technique is called as the standard addition method now in standard addition method the analyte is added into the sample at different concentration levels to nullify the matrix effect and what is matrix effect so when sample matrix also contributes to the analytical signal that effect is called as the matrix effect and in that case standard addition method is generally used for the quantification of the substance present in a sample so let us discuss in detail about the internal standard method so what is the purpose of internal standard why internal standard is used and here is the details the first one is to take care of errors in the sample injection volumes in case of hplc or the gas chromatography now if there is injection to injection variations possible so it is not the fault of the standard preparation process or the sample preparation process but because of the instrumentation error in the injections you have to you may get the variations into the end result and hence to avoid this variations you can always use internal standard during such scenario the second important purpose is to correct the loss of analyte during sample preparation such as the loss because of the poor extraction or the loss because of the poor derivatization or it may be the co precipitation with the another sample matrix i mean if your analyte is getting co precipitated with the another sample matrix then you can use the internal standard if your analyte is getting adsorbed on the glassware or the surface of the glassware then you can use the internal standard method so that you can easily quantify the analyte into sample accurately and the last one is if there is uncontrolled evaporation of the sample during the treatment so in all above cases you can use the internal standard so that you can have the precise and accurate quantification of the substance so how to select now the internal standard and here are the details so first one is the internal standard must be very similar but not identical to the chemical species of interest in the samples for example if you are quantifying the ethanol assay 
so that you cannot use ethanol as an internal standard, but you can think of using the methanol, which is similar to the ethanol in terms of its properties, in terms of the structure, the functional groups. So the methanol can become the best choice as an internal standard in case of ethanol quantification. The second point is the internal standard must be compatible with the sample matrix and sample preparation process. So it is very important that your internal standard must have the compatibility with the sample matrix as well as with the analyte that you are interested in quantifying. The third is internal standard must not present in a sample. So whatever internal standard you have thought of using it, it must not be a part of your sample. Otherwise, how will you come to know whether the response that you are getting is because of the added internal standard or whether it is because of the internal standard which is already present in the sample. So the very important criteria is that the internal standard you are thinking of using should not be present in the sample. The fourth point is select standard with ideal wavelength of detection in case of HPLC. So in this case you must also understand the internal standard selected should also have the approximately the similar detection wavelength as that of the interested analyte so that you will have the adequate response for both analyte peak as well as the internal standard peak. The fifth point is internal standard must be stable. So it is very important that whatever internal standard you choose, it must be stable into the sample environment and it must be compatible with the diluent and the process that you are using for the preparation of the sample solution. The next point is it must have similar response to that of the interested compound. The seventh point is internal standard must be available in pure form. And the eighth point is the internal standard concentration should be exactly same in both standard solution and in the sample solution. So it is very important to add the similar level of internal standard in standard and in the sample solution. Now let us understand the internal standard process with the help of one example and here is the example of assay of ethanol. So let us understand how the internal standard benefits analysis in terms of achieving the more precise result. Many times you may found that because of the injection variability you will end up getting the higher percent RSG during the standard injections and you may fail badly as a part of system suitability. So let us understand with the practical example how internal standard process can help you to reduce the uh, percent RSD and here is example. So let us assume that with the first experiment that is without internal standard and share are the details. So let me zoom in a little so that you will be able to see it properly. Okay, so as a part of method, you have to inject six replicate injections of standard ethanol solutions and here are the areas of the ethanol standard solutions and you end up getting 9.0 percentage RST. Now let us assume that you, you have conducted the similar experiment but with the help of internal standard. You have added methanol as the internal standard and this is the response now. And here are the peak responses of the methanol. So as a part of process you have to calculate the ratio of ethanol as to methanol and here are the ratios that li like for first injection 0 0.939, for second injections 0 0.932 and similarly you calculate the ratio for all the six injections calculate the mean of the ratio and look at the percent RSD figure it is 0.6 percent. So you can imagine how internal standard can help you if you are getting high variability, higher percent RSD during your system suitability evaluation. Thank you very much for watching and I will meet you in the next video. Bye bye.